Hey folks, this is Perry again. I am in my shop. This is a very quick and dirty video that I'm doing on my phone. And the reason I'm doing this is uh, I'm kind of going stir crazy. And uh, that stir craziness has made me decide to uh, work on my shop. And what you see here is my shop in an incredible mess. Yeah, I say incredible mess, but uh, I don't think you quite understand how much of a mess it was before. Um, long story short, I used this as my office and uh, storage when I was building the house. And uh, I've still got some stuff in here, but uh, it, it got really disorganized because... I was using this not as a shop, but as storage. And when I originally uh, relayed out the shop in, I think, 2015 or, or so, uh, when I put the Fidal right here, uh, I had the CNC lathe here. I had a decision to make, and that was, do I want a car garage or do I want a shop? And... This was sitting out in the barn and I felt bad for it. So I parked the car outside and I put the lathe inside. And at the time I laid it out in what seemed like the most, uh, you know, logical setup, but I came to realize that there was a lot of wasted space around it. So, uh, recently, um, let me come around the other corner. So recently, uh, I had a refrigerator where that compressor was, and uh, I moved the refrigerator, and what I figured out is that by moving that refrigerator and that welder that was next to it, I could take the compressor, and I basically just mirrored everything right here. The compressor is on that side, the shelves are on that side, and then I added the top section of shelves by shortening that, so I got another shelf in there. And then uh, by opening this up, I was able to put the table saw, which is on a set of wheels there, and because the table saw isn't very tall, and then there's the hand tools, I was able to put a shelf up here where there was already a board on the wall. So it kind of, one thing led to another, I got all my welding equipment here. This is where my desk was. Before that, that's where the plasma table was. Plasma table went out in the barn because it wasn't really conducive to using uh, in here. I had to take it outside to use it. So, uh, you yeah, know, it wasn't all that great. I put my desk here. Desk's in the house now. So all the welders are lined up here. Uh, I got so many projects in the, the pipeline, it's not funny. Uh, that cart right there, uh, is a welding cart that I started several years ago to make a, a double welding cart, one with the plasma on the bottom and the MIG on the top. And the major design feature of that, uh, which I'll see if I can... Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but the major design feature of that is it's got really big wheels. It's got 10-inch wheels in the back and 8-inch casters in the front. So it'll roll over rocks and bumpy surfaces and stuff like that. And I, I designed it all out in CAD. It's big enough to put 225 cubic bottles on the back. Um, I just never got around to finishing the rest of it. I had this thing all laid out and I got the, the rolling platform done. So that's a project I need to complete. Um, this lathe, uh, I haven't used this in 10 years. Um, it's got a complicated history. Uh, so this is, you know, the hardened CHNC1, you know, air-operated turret. I got it here, uh, fixed the turret, got that all working. Um, but I still have problems with the servo drives. And I've had problems with the servo drives since, like, 2008, whenever I put them in. And I need to fix that. So this thing... Uh, you know, it, it's one of those things where it's really not worth getting rid of and I've got so much time and effort and energy in it and I think I can just, I can clean it up and make it usable again, um, but I don't have an immediate use for it. 
Um, the Fadal, you know, I chronicled the refurbishment of that on uh, my channel, you know, 2015 when I got it. Uh, $1,000 Fadal, $3,000 in parts, and, you know, it makes chips. I've used it a couple of times. Um, one of the things I... I wanted to kind of start making a production part and I started tooling up uh, this machine and decided, well, as with some things, um, making the part just wasn't, I wasn't going to be able to com be competitive with import Chinese parts. So, but I did score this. That is a buck boost transformer that came from a coherent laser. Uh, long story short, that will turn the roughly 250 to 255 volts AC that I've got coming out of my phase converter back there. It will turn that into uh, 230 volts or 240 volts, whatever I want. It's a really fine grain setup. It's the right size. It's perfect for this application. I just need to slide it in behind there. Um, so that's one thing I need to do. Um, there is a coolant tank and I need to put that under there. So I need to get a coolant system worked out for this. Uh, this machine is set up for M8 and M7. So it's got mist and flood. You can see I got some cheap Chinese lock line, which I don't know how well that's going to last. I've got that coolant tank, and this is actually a split sump. So down here, there's a drain, and down there, there's a drain. Um, they don't really connect together. I don't know what they had in mind, but I'll just put a bucket under this side because all the coolant that drains in out of the table, down through that hole, it drains into this pan, and then there's a return on that pan that goes into the left side, and then any coolant that goes from that backsplash down uh, drains down onto the left side. So, you know, basically everything drains back in the, the coolant pan down there. So that needs to get taken care of. Um, bandsaw. Uh, I mean, there's really not much to do on that. It works. Uh, the little air blower that you can see kind of right there. Uh, the pump needs to be rebuilt or made or new whatever you want to call it. Um, but, uh, you know, the this MIG welder works great. That TIG welder works great. That MIG welder works great. Or I should say that MIG welder and that plasma cutter. All these work great. But I've got the plasma table out in the barn. I've got, where can I see it? Come through here. I have hiding somewhere, somewhere. I've got a hundred feet of like number six, uh, six, four hardwire. Um, and I had originally bought it cause I thought I was going to use it for wiring the barn, but I did that differently because it wouldn't fit inside conduit. Long story short, I'll take that stuff. I'll use that for wiring up the lathe because it needs a big old fatty. And I'm going to take this sub panel, put that in the barn because I've got, uh, what, a uh, 70 amps going out to the barn. And so that sub panel will go out there. I'll rewire it. Uh, the pump will run off that sub panel. And then uh, I'll put a welder plug out there so I can run the plasma cutting table. So the barn right now has gravel and uh, it's tin, so it's less likely to catch on fire. And, you know, it's a barn. Um, so let's see, what else? Uh, oh, yeah. So this not quite safe looking setup here where I've got all this crap sitting on top of a wood stove. Well, that's all car parts. Uh, that's car parts from my Mustang which is sitting in the other garage. And in this shop, oh yes, another project, an iron filter. But before I can do the iron filter, I need to 
redo the drain down here because there's no vent that goes out the roof. So I need to redo this drain, I need to add a P-trap, and then I need to plumb over to the well, uh, I don't know what a little well closet there. This is gonna go in that left side of the well closet and it's gonna filter iron out so that I don't get iron going into the house and the water will be better and I can have a, a reverse osmosis filter in the house. But anyway, uh, this filter right here, it backwashes every three days and it backwashes 80 gallons. You can't just run 80 gallons out on the ground, especially when it freezes during the winter. So I've got to put this in there. I've got to do the new drain over there. I've got to run a natural gas line from the house underground over here. And then I've got to get a furnace installed in here to keep the garage from freezing in the winter so that the backwash water from this thing will not uh, freeze up. The line that goes to the sink won't freeze up because I've got to go from there, up there, over here, through that corner right there. And then I've got to drop down into a P-trap that goes into the septic system. Um, that saw, I want to move that saw into the main shop. I don't know where it's going to go quite yet. Um, I don't want to move it and have it be in the way, but I really think that, uh, it should be out there instead of in here, because as you can see, um, uh, I don't really have a walkway around here and Hey, look at all my crud. Um, this is cleaned up because there's that whole cascade effect. You move a refrigerator and all of a sudden the entire shop gets reorganized and you get more space. Isn't that funny? Nine square feet, you know, basically one square, you know, one square yard. You do something like that and it has this cascade effect. And the bottom line is that cascade effect is going to result in this area right here is something like 12 by 14. So I'll have a work area that's about 12 by 14 feet, um, which I can pull the table saw into to do table saw and you know, do woodworking. Um, I've got the welding table outside, you know, the open air welding shop. And I could actually bring that in here. And then I built that table in 2004. Uh, the plan all along was to put rollers on the bottom of it, just like, you know, these table saws where you, uh, you have a set of rollers and then you just push down on this and it lifts the whole thing up and you can move it around. Well, that was what I had envisioned for that welding table. I never did it, but if I do that and if I put a set of big wheels on it, I could potentially roll it in and out of the shop. Uh, so that whenever I need the space, I can roll it outside. And right down here, that, that vice right there, that vice, uh, will replace the ugly yellow vice on my welding table. So I'll, uh, I'll just bob the corners and then put that vice on there and, you know, clean it off, put some rust converter on it, paint the base, put some wheels on it. Hey, another project. It'll probably take me a while to do. Never ending projects. I got to put a fence a gate out here, all sorts of stuff. But yeah, the shop is kind of messy. Um, I got to relocate this arrow line because this is where the side of the, this is where the, that used to be before. And now there's four more feet between where this is and the back of the, the lathe. So I've gained about four feet of depth in the shop. And that makes a whole heaping huge amount of difference. So now, like I said, it's, it's about 12 by 14, 12 by 12, something like that. Makes a big difference. Uh, so yeah, I've got a ton of projects, ton of things to do. And, uh, this, uh, whole worldwide pandemic is going to give me, well, it, it's going to make me focus on it because, 
this I can control, this I can do something about, this I can clean up, this I can make orderly. And, you know, it's something that is within my domain of control and, you know, uh, something that people overlook or don't realize is that, um, you know, when people are feeling stress, especially in these kinds of situations, uh, you know, they need something that helps them feel normal and, uh, helps them with, uh, their issues. And this, getting this sorted out helps me. Now, my day to day life really, really hasn't changed much because I've been working from home for six and a half years now. And, um, going, you know, it, most everybody that can work from home, you know, has been told to work from home now. And I, you know, I, I feel bad for, you know, everybody that's out there. And, uh, but at the same time, it, it doesn't quite have the same impact on me because I already was working from home. Uh, you know, I, before I had this job, I worked in an office, and before that, I worked for myself, having the shop. So, you know, working from home or working for myself, more or less the same thing. But, um, so, here's those drives. These are Servo Dynamics Ruby drives. They're problematic is the best way I can put it. Um, they, uh... They basically, I don't know the full story behind it, but more or less, uh, they're obsolete or, um, they're orphaned. That's the best way to put it. So these are orphan drives. I've got a couple Servo Dynamics, uh, branded, uh, AC Lens Tech drives, which one of them they provided. See, I needed two of them. They only provided one as a replacement and I found another one on eBay. I may end up installing those in here if I need to, but I'm going to give these another try. I, you know, I'm stubborn. So, but this is the inside of this cabinet, you know, Fanuc, uh, AC servo spindle. That right there is sort of like a smaller version of that. So, you know, that's where I got the idea is, Hey, maybe I can get one of those matching transformers. And I scoured eBay and I got that for 99 bucks and I paid 150 bucks to ship it. Which, by the way, uh, Fastenal trucking is a very reasonable way to, uh, to ship stuff. Uh, I've heard about it on, you know, the Practical Machinist Forum and stuff, but, uh, you know, I, I hadn't done it myself until I got that, and it was far cheaper than what, uh, what, you know, UPS or FedEx would have done. This is the other cabinet in here. Uh, if this were a FANUC drive or a FANUC control machine, this entire cabinet would be full. But right now, um, I'm not going to say what I think this looks like, but I think that uh, some imaginative people out there might have a good idea of what they think that looks like. Well... Uh, I'm just going to end this here. This is a really low production value video, but I felt like, uh, I wanted to post something and, uh, you know, I, this is, this is progress. This is a project I've been working on, uh, like an hour or two here and there, uh, to get it done. So I felt like, uh, I wanted to share that and <sighs> we'll see, you know, the world is, as they say, as lots of people have been saying, the world is a weird place, buddy. So, but I am going to cut this now. It's just me babbling, but hey, shop update 2020. I'll have a full shop uh, tour whenever this is all done and cleaned up. Catch you later. Bye.